If you don't know how to make samosa, then today I'm going to show you step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make the most delicious and tasty samosa ever. <laughs> ever. So, if you don't know what samosa is, samosa is a deep-fried snack stuffed with the yummiest filling ever. It ranges from meat, chicken, to vegetables. You can fill with whatever you wish and the outcome is going to be amazing and delicious. For this samosa recipe, I'm going to be using four ingredients. So I have flour, salt, cold water, not warm water, cold water, and cooking oil. That is all you're going to be using today. And of course, it has step by step. So let's get started. All these ingredients are listed below in the description box with the right quantity. So you check them out and also I've linked several other videos. So you also check the videos out. So in a large bowl, I'll add my three cups of all-purpose flour. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Then I'm going to use a whisk to combine the sugar and the salt together. This is going to make sure that the salt is evenly distributed in the flour. Next, I'm going to add water in bits. So I'll use my hands. And of course, my hands are clean. To mix the flour together with the water. And use your fingers to squeeze in the water in the flour so that the, the flour can absorb the moisture. So now that a dough has formed, I'm going to transfer this on my countertop. Put this aside together with the remaining water. So this is how it's looking. I'll knead this for about two minutes so that it can combine well. This samosa recipe is easy and straightforward. What you just need to do is practice on how to get the right consistency of the dough together with shaping it and filling the samosa. So that is going to give you a very nice samosa. You will love this. <laughs> so this is how my dough is looking. As you can see, it's not sticky at all. So I've kneaded this for around two minutes. This dough is different from mandazi or the chapati dough you usually make. So the samosa dough should be a little bit firm. It shouldn't be sticky. As you can see, it's not sticky. Something else you should know is that you shouldn't add oil while incorporating the flour together with the water. Just leave it like that. So let's go to the next step. So I'm going to shape the dough like this. Then I'm going to use a knife and cut my dough into average size. So this is how my dough is looking. So I'm going to roll this in a ball just like that place them there so i've finished shaping my dough into balls so now then i'm going to use my rolling pin and roll out into a round shape just like that then I'm going to keep this here and move to the next dough so here is the next step and it's very crucial I'll add a little bit of oil in a bowl a small bowl or you can add in anything you have I'm going to use a finger to apply oil on my dough. 
The reason I'm using my hands is that I don't want to apply a lot of oil on my dough because once you apply a lot of oil and place the other dough on top, it's going to slide off. So what you do, you just apply a little bit of oil. Also, I don't want to use my brush because my brush will apply a lot of oil, hence the dough will slide off each other. Yeah, so I'm going to show you how I usually do mine. So this is enough for my for my dough. So I'm going to place this on top and then I'll put it on the side and continue with the rest. So don't forget that step. Another reason we are applying oil on each layer of the dough is because you don't want the dough to stick together when you start making the big chapati, the big, <laughs> I don't know if it's a chapati, the big ones. Okay, we'll, you'll see the next step. Yeah, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. So this is how it's looking. And as you can see, I have four pieces of dough. One, two, three, four. So now I'm going to show you the next step. So I'm going to flour my working surface. Then now I'm going to use my hands and press the size of the dough, like you're making pizza, you just press <laughs> pizza dough. So you place a pan on medium low flame so that it can start heating while making the dough. So this is how it's looking after using my fingers. As you can see, the flour is evenly, the layers are evenly distributed. So the next step is, <laughs> I'll add a little bit of flour, then the next step is to roll out the dough using my rolling pin. You should show tender and love to your dough. <laughs> so you'll push the dough slowly as you flip just push so you show some love to your dough <laughs> because the samosa is going to be yummy there's something about making samosa people are usually afraid of making samosa pockets because actually i don't know why Okay, some say that it's hard, but actually it's very simple. Once you follow my recipe, you're, you're going to make yummy samosas. So just follow. So now, here's the next step. If you have a large chapati pan, that is the best. I just have my normal small chapati pan. I'm going to place this. You realize that my pan is small, but... <laughs> It's okay, it'll still work. So, I'm trying to dry the bottom, the, the bottom one, as you can see. This is how I usually do, <laughs> but it's okay. So my bottom one is ready. So I'll flip. Then I'll peel my first layer of my chapati dough. So you'll peel as you turn. And it's very hot. <laughs> so you watch your fingers. So I'll place my dough on my countertop on that side. Then I'll flip, quickly flip the other side. And I'll start peeling the next one. Once you place your pan on the stove top, the flames should be on low. So this is my next round. I am going to place this on top. Then I'm going to wait for my dough to dry. So as it dries, I'm going to be moving around because my pan is small. So I'll wait a little bit. So 
so make sure the edges are dry because you're going to peel the dough this is what i'm talking about so what i'm doing i'm trying to let my edges dry so because they're dry i'll flip on the other side then as the other side dries i'm going to peel my top dough you peel as you move the dough around you see why i was telling you that it is important to apply oil on your dough because if you don't apply oil in the middle of your dough it won't be you won't be able to peel your dough easily actually it will be very hard i'm going to place my dough on the side that dried up then i'll check on my next one flip check this out very easy so i'm going to flip again then I'm going to peel my next one. So I'm going to place my samosa in a kitchen towel and then I'll do the rest. So this is how my dough is looking. And as you can see, the sheets are very light. They are see-through. You can see my hand. So that is how you make your samosa pocket, but we are not through with the steps. So you have to look for something that is round and large. So what is the purpose of this lid? So this lid is going to help me make a very perfect round. So I'm going to place this on my, on my samosa pads. Are they pads by now? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to place it in the middle like that. That is the reason I made a very big chapati before uh, before drying it up because I wanted it to give me an extra circumference so that my lid can fit. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So that was the reason. So now I'm going to pick a small knife or a big knife, whatever you have, and then press the lid down and then I'll cut through my dough like that so you make sure to cut through the dough Don't throw this away. The reason is you can reuse these off cuts. First of all, you can deep fry, you can cut them into pieces, then deep fry them and make nachos. <laughs> you know nachos, yeah. So, or chips, flat chips, whichever. <laughs> then the second one, you can add these off cuts in a, in a bowl, then add water, then you let it soak up the water. Then after a while, you'll find that your dough is soggy. You'll add more flour and then you'll make chapati with these off cuts. Isn't that a very nice thing? <laughs> yeah, it is because you don't want to waste food, especially in these times of Corona. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to be doing with mine. Mine, I'm going to be making chapati for my, for my dinner. So I'll soak this in a bowl with water and chapati. Then we'll make chapati. Now back to my perfect shaped <laughs> dough. This is the next step you're going to be doing. You're going to fold the top one halfway like that.
you make sure it is aligned to the edges of the other ones then you're going to pick your knife and cut the first one is going to guide you to cut a very nice half Then I'll flip it back and follow the same cut that I made to cut my top one. Then this is the next step. I'll fold this quarter way. Make sure it is aligned on the edges. And cut my dough into quarters just like that then I'll flip it back and repeat the same and we are done making samosa pockets so I have very nice pockets so I'll place this on top of each other These are a lot of samosa pockets. There's so many. So that is how you make your samosa pockets. Wow. And let me tell you, if you follow my recipe, you are going to make the best samosa pockets ever. I made mine for around 30 minutes because the dough is not a lot and they are good. So I hope you'll follow my step-by-step -step tutorial and the outcome will be definitely so good like mine and you will definitely be the best samosa pocket maker ever <laughs> ever so this is how i make my samosa pockets and i always enjoy the outcome hope you try and make them <laughs>